Hey, this is Raquel here, and I'm going to show you four really easy and very helpful ways to save on CPU usage using Logic Pro. I've ordered the steps and how I view them to be the most useful and, and easiest to, to do in Logic. First thing you have to do is to make your CPU meter visible in Logic. To do that, go ahead and go over to this part where it shows you the BPM, the key, the time signature, and where you are in the session. Uh, right click customize control bar in a display then go over to the LCD section custom and from here now you can select load meters which will then create uh, the special header here for you press OK now at this point we can go ahead and double click on the CPU usage and what you'll see here now is the amount of threads logic is using to process whatever plugins and such you are using in your session. My computer is a dual core, which is why I only have two threads here. Everyone's computer is going to be a little bit different depending on how many cores your processor is. The more you have, the better and faster and easier it is for Logic to process all of your, your information in your plugins without the system overloading. So in order to give yourself more threads and more processing power, what you're going to do is go over to the Logic Pro up in the upper left hand corner go over to preferences click on audio this screen should show up go to processing threads again mine's a dual core system so it's selected at two but I can raise that to four um, whatever the highest number is is showing for you here under preferences select that apply changes wait for a minute now notice here I have four threads, so essentially I've just doubled the, the threading power, the processing power. I've kind of created four cores now instead of just two. And that'll significantly help out your processing power. Okay, the next thing to do once you've set that up, log out of your audio preferences. You can keep this meter up if you want, it doesn't really matter at this moment. But the next thing you can do to significantly help out your CPU is to rearrange the way you route your plugins. So I'll use my trombone track here for example. Notice I've got four plugins running on just this one track. No. I've got four plugins running here on my trombone track. What I'm going to do is really kind of force this track to be two tracks by making the, the original track, my trombone track, I'm going to route that to a busing track and any open busing track that I have, bus 22 for example. Then I'm going to drag half the plugins over to the busing track and confirm that my busing track is now routed to my stereo out, which it is. So really all I've done is split this track into to kind of two channels here, and in this process I have eased the processing power on one individual thread here, and I've spread that across two threads. So if there's a lot of plugins going on and running at the same time, it's not going to peak and kind of crap out on one on one thread. It's going to spread that 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 powering load over two threads. But go ahead and try that with all of your tracks. I should really help in saving some processing power and conserve your, your CPU so that not all of your, your processing threads are, are maxed out. All right, the third trick we're gonna show you now to, to back off of your CPU a bit is just simple busing. So right here, we, we did use an auxiliary bus track to split up our two, our, excuse me, to split up our, our plugins. But right now we're just gonna use simple busing. Notice that all of my, my string tracks here have the space D plugin. It's the same space uh, string reverb I've, I've set on all the tracks. Instead of having this one plugin existing in six separate instances, I can just take the space D plugin, move it to a, an auxiliary track, and bus all of the bus that auxiliary track to each one of these tracks. So I'll show you how to do that right now. So by pressing X, I'm going to open up my mix window. I'm just going to drag one instance of these of this plugin to an open busing channel. So right here, bus 13. I'm going to name this bus 13 as space D for strings. I'm going to go back to my string section right here and remove every other instance that I have going on. So now I'm essentially deleting five plugins here which will in the end five plugins here five plugins there really it really adds up so if you can remove as many as you can and then bus the signal to this track 
then you'll be saving a lot of CPU usage. So now I'm going to go to bus, select track, thir or excuse me, bus 13, my space D strings, but I'm going to go ahead and add space D to all of my tracks here, my string tracks. Okay, so now all of that's added. I'll be able to send as much of the signal as I want to my track here with the bus as I listen to the session later on. You're gonna save a, a, a bunch of processing power by only having one instance of the plugin um, functioning throughout your, your logic session. Now the final thing that you can do to really help on CPU, and this is kind of last ditch effort I feel, if you really need that, that small push more to get through your session. The last thing you're gonna do is called freezing a track. Notice here I've got the snowflake type symbol by clicking on the snowflake, you're essentially freezing the track in place so that Logic does not have to, every single time you press play, activate all the plugins used. It freezes the uh, current setting of your plugins, memorizes that, and doesn't have to, to kind of utilize those plugins every single time. The downside with freezing a track is you can no longer edit anything on that track. Notice I've got a white snowflake hovering over each of these plugins. And again, if I go to the MIDI, uh, I won't be able to to edit the MIDI either, but simply you can unfreeze it. In order to find this freeze symbol here, what you're going to do is double click on the on the track, go to track header components. I'll press hide freeze to show you how to remove it if you don't want it there, and I'll show you now. I'll do the same exact thing to say show. It'll say show freeze. I'm clicking on show freeze, and now I have it available on every single one of my tracks. So I'll just show you what it looks like if I were to freeze now my string section. Since I, let's say I did what I wanted with it, I'm gonna press play and notice now it's going to process the freezing. So it just takes a quick second here. And this is exactly what'll happen when you unfreeze a track. It'll take a moment to process that. And now you can see here, I've got my, my tracks all frozen. I kind of fast forward through that. It takes about a minute or two to freeze your tracks depending how long your session is. Okay, that's all. If you want a more detailed explanation of how this is done and an explanation really on why we're doing these steps in the order, um, let me know. I can always make a longer video or if you've got questions, simple ones, I can answer them for you in the comments below. And if you know of any other CPU saving tricks, please post them so that everybody could, could read them and benefit from it. But other than that, thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys are able to get a further along in your sessions now and keep creating music or whatever you guys may be doing. Cool. So I'll talk to you guys later for another Logic tutorial.